Yeah. Um, this is my first time actually sharing this, so it's kind of crazy. <laughs> My name is Stephen Ho. I am 31 years old and I am Vietnamese. I'm Mike Kim. I'm Korean American and I'm 43 years old. Hi, I'm Nikki Suhu. I am 32 and I'm Chinese American. My name is Brian Nishiyama. I'm 26 years old. I'm half Korean and half Japanese. My name is Kian Phan. I'm 29 years old and I am a Chinese American. My name is Michelle K. Hanavisa. I am 29 years old from Los Angeles, California, and I am a fourth generation Japanese American. Regarding my own interactions with racist comments and discrimination, I remember going over to a friend's house with some friends and his mother kind of just like looked at me and she was like, why is there a monkey in this room? Whew. I remember like going home and telling my father this and he was so upset. Um, but I didn't say anything, you know, because I didn't know like how you were supposed to respond. There's a story of when I used to ride the school bus um, early in the morning. For three months straight, I would just throw up and I didn't know what it was. And so they sent me to the nurse's office and they said, you're gonna have to miss first period and you're gonna have to wash your jeans here. First period is when all these racial taunts would happen. I got smart, so every time I would throw up in the morning before first period, I would throw up on my clothes intentionally so I could miss first period and the racial slurs that were thrown at me. One experience that I had when I first kind of was starting, it was one of my first, uh, I guess, lead roles uh, on, on the stage. And there was this one point where I was in the middle of a very long monologue, it was like three minutes or something, and someone in the audience kept chanting Ching Chong for like the entire duration of the monologue. And it was so shocking to me, because you know, obviously I had experienced racism and I've experienced things like that in the past, but never when I was performing. I can't see it going away anytime soon. It's so much a part of, you know, at least my daily life. I'm constantly reminded that I am Asian. I guess during middle school, it's probably one of the toughest times, uh, especially when my grandma would be the one, you know, making lunch for me. And I would open up my lunchbox and all my friends would be like, ew, what is that? <laughs> what are you eating? That smells gross. I just kind of felt ashamed. Uh, I, I remembered that I would just throw away my lunch every single day. I would just come back home and kind of tell my grandma, like, I don't want, you know, rice and all this Asian, Korean food, Japanese food, I want to be like normal like others. It kind of makes me feel a little bit angry. I wish I could have just kind of stood up for myself and kind of introduced them to the culture. Like, but at the same time, I didn't know. So obviously, you know, I just thought I was white. So the conversations with all these hate crimes do come up with my friends just because it makes us worry about our parents. There's always that constant thought of what's gonna happen to my mom if she just walks alone in the streets of LA. You know, you just never know what would happen. And it's just heartbreaking to see that there are people like that exist. So my last name's Ho. And I, they're, they're, the jokes were endless. It wasn't something that I would go home and try to explain to my family. I never, I never said anything to them that, hey, this is happening, and you know, it's hurting me. Because I, I don't know if I registered it like that. It sucks thinking about it now, but it, I just, I let it happen. If I leaned into it, they, it, it hurt less. Like, yep, that's me, hose here. It didn't work. You know, I, f I felt terrible the whole time, but externally was me laughing with them, trying to laugh with them, instead of being confrontational. I do, I, I do believe that if that pain was taken away, I feel like maybe I would have been more courageous to, you know, 
pursue the things that I loved earlier on in life. For anyone, it doesn't matter if you're Asian, you're black, Latino, it doesn't matter if, if someone attacks you at your core and you're just taking it day after day, year after year, what that does to you tomorrow, um, the years after, trying to let go of some of these stories in my head, um, it's so hard. So my experience growing up with racism as an Asian American, when you asked me that question originally, I was like, I am not even sure what to say. Have I experienced racist things? I remember in high school, people called me a banana, yellow on the outside, white on the inside. But what I thought was actually more interesting when I started to think about my relation to these racist acts was that I actually embraced them. And I, I didn't think that they were racist because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to feel good about being like everybody else, like being white. And then I realized when you actually made me start thinking about it and how kind of sad that really is that I have to be that token Asian or that I have to embrace these things in order to be successful. I like don't know how to feel because I feel shameful, you know? Like I feel bad that, that I, I don't know, that I am not <laughs> more Asian, <laughs> you know? That I don't want to embrace it because it won't make me fit in or it won't make me be loved or it won't make me feel protected. And I know that my deepest um, fear is, is like that I need, I feel that I need protection from the world. There's a sense of numbness. In reality, it's more just like compartmentalization, right? It's not really numb. It does affect me still. You know, you hear it enough times and it, it, it hurts a little bit less, of course, but it's still there, right? I mean, it still brings up those, you know, feelings and, and, and those memories and all that. So, yeah. I do have hope that things can get better. We've felt so voiceless for so long. We never felt like we did have allies in this. So I think trying to build those connections, you know, and, and gaining support, I think is, is very important. And I do believe that all forms of oppression are linked. When I started doing comedy, it was to get my story out. One of the unique things about the stand-up, some of the stand-up that I do is I speak Vietnamese. Initially, I didn't think people would go for it, but I did a couple segments of me speaking Vietnamese and translating it to English, and the audience loved it. They responded, you know, well. And so that told me that, you know, they are ready to hear our stories. We just have to put in the effort to write it down and believe that it's worthy of stage time or screen time. My strategy is to play in the game so you can change the rules. Because I would hope for it, for anyone of any color, to not have to consider with limitations the color of their skin in determining the type of life that they want to live. My whole mission was to try to fit in and try to be accepted by other communities that don't look like me. I was so integrated in a different part of me um, my entire life and then college, that post-college, that was really the journey when I was like, you know what, I need to change everything completely because this isn't working. And I didn't know what that meant just then, but I started to explore and really try to learn my own heritage and my own culture. I was like, yo, this is dope. Like our community and our culture is so cool. And I think that's when something sparked inside me where I was like, I did not embrace any of this growing up. When I started to really find my purpose and like my voice, that's when I started to really feel confident enough to say something and to speak up because I couldn't just sit there and stay silent. I'm very proud of being Korean American. I'm proud of being Asian American. Um, and I'm proud of trying to voice my opinion and tell my story. I made a promise to myself that I'm not gonna mute my experience based on making someone else more comfortable.